Welcome back to State of the Nation. It's the story that won't stop. Donagate. Yesterday, we discussed the fact that Starmer's dates didn't make sense after he tried to throw his son under the bus by suggesting that Lord Alley's £18 million apartment was used for his son to study for his GCSEs. We also discussed the fact that the apartment was used for Starmer's COVID broadcast when it was decked out to look like his own home, even with pictures of his children in it. However, since then, more developments have emerged. The Guardian reported on the story after having been briefed by Number 10 that it understood the flat was used for the COVID broadcast as a one-off. 37 minutes later, the Guido Fawkes news site, Clever Old Guido, revealed he had also used the one-off apartment for his broadcast tribute to the late Queen Elizabeth II. This use of the apartment does not appear in the Register of Interests, and it's intriguing to try to speculate what was wrong with the Reverend Starmer's own home for these broadcasts. Perhaps, like Ed Miliband, he has two kitchens or some other embarrassing luxury. And now it emerges Lord Alley, owner of the apartment that was once allegedly used just once, was also lent to Wes Streeting for another Labour Party happening. Does this poor man or rich man ever get to sleep in his own flat? He also lent the Labour MP, Siobhan McDonough, £1.2 million to buy a house for her terminally ill sister. So the real question is, what does Lord Alley want for all of this? The nature of these donations interesting and distinctly personal. As I've disclosed before, any donation I ever received was for the Conservative Party of my local association. None was for me personally. Hi everyone, why current and former Tory MPs are busy criticising Keir Starmer and his team over freebies? They're relying on two assumptions. First, that Labour will be too blinded by that people will be too blinded by rage to focus on anything but the new Labour government, and second, that no one will bother looking things up online. You see, while Jacob Rees-Mogg tries to present himself as squeaky clean, he should be cautious about throwing stones because in glass houses, because his biggest enemy is Google. So we've listened to what he said. It's been discussed that Keir Starmer's dates didn't add up when he tried to shift the narrative onto his son by suggesting that Lord Alley's £188 million apartment was used for his son to study for his GCSEs. Who needs a £188 million house or apartment to study your GCSEs? It was also pointed out that the apartment was used for Starmer's COVID broadcasts, dressed up to look like his own home, even with pictures of his children. But more developments, more developments have come into light. After Number 10 briefed The Guardian, they reported that the apartment was used as a one-off for the COVID broadcast. However, just 70, 37 minutes later, Guido Fawkes revealed that Starmer was also used the one-off apartment for a broadcast tribute to the late Queen Elizabeth II. The additional use of the apartment doesn't appear in the Register of Interests, leading one to wonder what went, what was wrong with using Keir Starmer's own home for these broadcasts. Perhaps like Ed Miliband, he has two kitchens or some other inconvenient luxury. And now we learn that the same apartment, allegedly used just once, was also lent to, lent to West Streeting for another Labour event. Does this poor or rather very wealthy man get to sleep in his own flat? Another Labour MP, £1.2 million to buy a house for a terminally ill sister. So the real question is, what does Lord Alley want in return for all this? These donations, these donations seem quite personal. In 2022, Byline Times reported that the fracking minister funded by fossil fuel investors was none other than climate science sceptic Jacob Rees-Mogg who received £22,000 from a hedge fund manager known for profiting from the collapse of the British pound, the failure of the top UK firms and rising energy prices. Throughout his time as Conservative MP for North East Somerset, Rees-Mogg has received repeated donations from the same individual. £2,000 in 2010, £9,000 in 2013, £6,000 in 2015 and £5,000 in 2017, all from the same hedge fund manager who also supported a hard Brexit campaign. So when Jacob Rees-Mogg claims he's cleaner than clean, well, that's simply not the case. The issue here is clear. Why are major donors giving money to political parties? It's a problem that's been repeated many times before. Political parties shouldn't rely on private donations. They should be publicly funded to root out corruption, whether it's the lack of Jacob Rees-Mogg or potential issues within the new Labour government. Often, money is given with the ex expectation, of course, of something given in return. But let me know what you think in the comments. I've been Jake from Just Jake, and as always, I'll see you next time. <laughs>